Hello and welcome to Middle Fuck. <laughs> okay, uh, let's start that over. Middle Flack. <laughs> let's start that over again. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hello and welcome to middle class film cat film class. <laughs> God, <laughs> fuck. Take three. Okay. All right. I got this. I'm surprised it. I'm surprised it took us nine episodes to fuck the beginning up. <laughs> I was expecting to do it every time. Okay. I All right. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna get this time. Yeah, take middle time. class film class. Middle class film class. Middle class film class. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Middle Class Film Class Podcast. I am Tyler and along with me as always are Peter and Joseph. Hello. Hello. So this week on the Wheel of Destiny, we landed on my pick, George of the Jungle. George, George, George of the Jungle, strong as he can be. Ooh. Ah! Watch out for the dream. Watch out for the I give you the king of the jungle. So before we obviously get into the meat of this episode, uh, we're going to start, as always, with some streaming picks. Uh, so, Joseph, do you? what is your streaming pick for this week? My streaming pick for this week is a documentary that is on HBO Now called... Uh, Won't you be my neighbor? A a Mr. Rogers documentary made last year that I just watched maybe about a month ago or so, and um, it is a very emotional um, documentary about the uh, the story of of Fred Rogers and his PBS television show that um, I didn't really grow up watching that much but i did catch oh, episodes really? yeah i didn't i didn't i it wasn't around for me uh, on my tvs mm -hmm. um but whenever i would go to uh, daycare um it would be on there and i would i would catch it there but um watching the documentary it made me like oh man i wish i wish i grew up watching this as much as other people and i know um, once you once you mentioned a documentary about uh mr rogers i already started choking up yeah, <laughs> it's. Was, I mean, he, was that something you watched, Tyler? Yeah, um, uh, Mr. Rogers was a huge part of my childhood, and really, yeah, I, I grew up watching PBS a lot. You know, Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, mm -hmm. and all of those public access shows. I, well, I wouldn't say public access, but public broadcasting yeah, public. shows. Yeah, um, I grew up a. I I grew up watching those religiously every day after mm -hmm. I would get out of school, um, and I heard about this documentary coming out, and I I've been meaning to watch it, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm just I'm not in I haven't been in the mood to like get choked up get recently. Yeah, yeah, because so I guess I should say the the. The doc, uh, Fred Rogers, since you guys, I don't know if you guys really grew up with him, but his advice on life to little children is really wholesome to the point where it, it like, if, when you're watching it, you get to that feeling of feeling, like, innocent and all of that. Yeah, so yeah. I can imagine that this documentary has a lot of uh, anecdotes about, you know, how he felt towards life and his philosophy. Yeah, it's um, it's very uh, almost throughout the whole movie, you're uh, like on the verge of tears because every every interview he has or every because uh, they show segments from a show where he's talking to kids or they there is a part where they have to cover um, assassination or divorce and like the way that he's able to or was able to um, convey that message to children in such a wholesome way was something else it was like it was he was uh a parent that every kid should have you know it's, yeah um, it's hmm. funny that you say he covered assassinations to divorce just yeah, everyday child stuff 
<laughs> yeah, it's it, it's like it, he answers all the questions that parents don't want to answer to their to their kid to their own kids. From I I didn't have really any exposure to Mr. Rogers. He was in the Zeitgeist, and I knew of him when I was a kid. But the hand puppets always turned me away. <laughs> so I was like, oh, the show with the guy with the puppets. No, thanks. So that's a hard pass. Yeah. As a child. <laughs> as a child. But I do I do feel like I mess out, too. Um, you said you only got limited exposure to it, Joseph. But yeah. seeing it later and everyone talking about these beautiful, uh, impactful uh, moments and times in their formidable childhood years that they had from him um <clears throat> i felt like i was missing out on something there so i'm i haven't seen it yet either i'm looking forward to seeing it yeah I it's there's some good parts it's on, in it it's and on then, hbo yeah hbo now and uh there's some most of it is like that where it's very like oh oh like <laughs> yeah very and then there's inspiring. there's an there's an angering part where like it shows like a segment from fox news saying mr rogers the most evil man in america yeah. Jesus. Because he ra- because he <laughs> raised he raised the generation of people who think they're special or whatever, and like oh that was god. their argument. I was like, oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because you know human consciousness isn't special or anything. <laughs> yeah. So sentience. If you're looking to be on the verge of tears or or reminisce in your youth growing up with Mister Rogers, then I recommend Won't You Be My Neighbor on HBO now. Well, let me ask you this, Joseph. Uh, as far as documentaries go, was it a well-made documentary despite the subject matter? Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's a really well-made. It wasn't like biased or anything towards him. I mean, I don't know how it couldn't be. It's probably hard to tell that. Biased. Yeah, it's probably hard to tell that because most most documentaries are biased towards the subject matter in one way or another. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Unless you really won't know because that's they're they're giving you what you want to know. But I feel <laughs> I feel like. That personality is probably somebody that's pretty hard to f- pull up dirt on. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. would almost be like, like, uh, if it was a documentary of like showing a bad side of Mr. Rogers, they would have to dig deep. I think it would have to be like, he yelled at his dog or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that monster. <laughs> <laughs> you see this, this is what was raising your children. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let you know how I liked it when I watch it because, um, he's he's among the holy trinity of wholesomeness with um bob ross and steve Irwin. yeah mm. for 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 our generation the holy trinity <laughs> yeah yeah on, I, on you know, as you, far as uh uh icons and media and compassion and television yeah, media mm-hmm. it's uh a blind spot for me so cool good recommendation yeah all right peter what's uh what's your streaming pick for this week i, I got two uh this week one that's not a movie and one that is a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are looking for, if you if you enjoyed our episode about Moon and you want to dive a little bit deeper into the concept of what happens when a clone meets itself, like Tyler says, his first instinct is to just kill it. <laughs> 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 this is a little bit more of a comedic take on that concept. It's called Living With Yourself, available on Netflix. And it, it's the Paul Rudd starring... Um, mini series, uh, TV series, streaming series, whatever you call it now, mm-hmm. um, and he plays himself twice in this movie based around the concept of cloning, but taken in a very fun and serious way. So, um, so Paul Rudd plays himself. Yeah, pl- well, no, no, he plays he plays a character named Miles, but he plays oh, okay. two characters, two characters, oh, two clo- you know, like Paul him Rudd and a copy as in a Paul Rudd clone. Paul Rudd as Paul Rudd. Now there's. <laughs> It's a, it's set in the real world though because Tom Brady makes a cameo as himself in this, mm-hmm. and the concept of you know they say there's n- n- nothing new under the sun. There's no way to make a zombie movie f- fun and fresh, but you know 28 days later came along and changed everything. Yeah. And um, you know there's no nothing new about time travel, but then someone goes comes along and makes Primer for ten thousand dollars and just blows that out of the water. <laughs> This is kind of in that vein. There's, it's, it's an interesting take on cloning, um, but it's really fun. So I won't give anything more than that. It's eight episodes. They're about 27 minutes long each. Mm-hmm. So it's like watching two long back-to-back movies, and it's really well done. Nice. So living, living with yourself on Netflix, and um, 
I'm looking forward to Tyler's reaction on that. So yeah. when, when you see it, I want to <laughs> I want to see I want to see how you react to his reaction to his clone because hmm. I thought about you a lot when I was watching this <laughs> about you saying I just kill it. I'd see it, and my first reaction would be kill myself. Yeah, meaning the clone. <laughs> and uh, I just for our listeners, I don't want to kill myself in the traditional <laughs> sense. I want to kill my other self because there can only be one Tyler. It's true. There can only be <laughs> one. A, this is Highlander. There can only be <laughs> one. Um, so then my my other pick is an actual movie on this movie podcast. Um, it's called um, Black Snake Moan. Mm. Oh, you, yeah. you guys seen this movie? I have. Not. I have not seen this movie you, in probably no. in over ten years. Oh, Tyler has. Yeah, I, I saw it when I was uh, about sixteen, maybe a little bit younger. Saw it because it was Sam Sam Jackson was in it, and I was like, oh, I love yeah. I love uh, episode two, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mace Windu. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, Samuel I Jackson would've... from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But you know, yeah. <laughs> but honestly, his most well-known portrayal. But yeah, I mean, I didn't like. I didn't like soak it in. I just kind of, you know, it was on. It was on. Yeah. It was on. Sure. What is Black Snake? Well, it's, what What is Black Snake it's, Moan? It's a very. It's it's worth paying attention to. Okay. Put it that way. Okay. It's um. It's uh directed by um. Let's see, Craig Brewer. It's his name. I always forget his name. He was the one of the whitest guys you'll see who directed Hustle and Flow and then Black Snake Moan, <laughs> <laughs> back to, back to back, and, and it's uh, Samuel Jackson and um, Christina Ricci, who's who I thought you were gonna say Tyler when you said I heard there was Christina Ricci was in it. <laughs> she seems like your type of gal. <laughs> yeah. I could see you two walking hand in hand by side of lake. Side <laughs> of lake in like Minnesota. Yeah, so she's she's got blonde hair in this, um, which is just interesting to me. It's the first thing I think of when I think of her in this because she's so dark. Yeah. But um, she's a nymphomaniac who is. Um, oh, she's really my type then. <laughs> 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 she's yeah, she's she's a nymphomaniac who it, lit- cannot control herself, and she is dating uh, a very timid, um, panic attack. Uh, stricken Justin Timberlake who is going <laughs> off to the army. Oh my god, yeah. I forgot he was in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Justin and Timberlake uh, so is in it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy shit. And it, like yeah. just about it just about anything happens, it throws him out into a like a you know, a panic attack and uh she kind of calms him down and he tries to keep her calm as she's, you know, getting all worked up and She's being taken by the black snake moan, yeah. And that's what that's what Samuel Jackson calls it. He he says the devil's inside her. She's got the black snake moan, and um, he's just a good old boy living down in southern Alabama or Mississippi or Missouri or one of those hot states. And uh, <laughs> could could be could be Georgia. I don't know because David Banner's in this too, the rapper, and I think he's from Mississippi. Hmm. But I, I don't know. Anyways, it all blurs together yeah. once you get past Colorado. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so she basically gets uh, beat up real bad at a party by um, Justin Timberlake's best friend, and she, he gets dumped for dead off on this road that leads up to Sam Jackson's house. And he finds her, thinks she's dead, and he's like, "Oh man, I'm gonna be found with this dead white woman on my property. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, you know, killed for this." And she wakes up. He she real he realizes that something's wrong with her, so he keeps her pretty much captive at his house and tries to break the demons from her. So it's an interesting story because none of no one really plays a traditional good guy in this. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam, Sam Jackson's character's name is Lazarus and he's, uh, of course, yeah. he's, a, a, yeah, he's as, he's as close to a, a, a good guy as you can get. And he, I mean, he is, you don't, you know, he's definitely not a bad guy, but he does more or less kidnap a, young woman keep her chained to her his radiator in her house or keep her chained in there so uh really well directed um i mean it's it's a solid movie it's not for everybody because it's pretty gritty and mm-hmm. there's some if, if you're if you're triggered by realistic sex scenes and you know that sort of thing sexual assault you may want to pass this one but it's uh it's a really well made movie and it's streaming on amazon prime Oh. Nice. Ooh. Black nice. Snake Moan. 
2006. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I did see this when I was super young, and it's probably why it didn't, it didn't, like, I didn't connect with it, because I was super young. It's not, and no, you, you, it, there's, there's deep, um... It's like nuances. There's deep, yeah, and the subject matter is, is way too deep for, like, a, even, like, a, you know, 15, 16 year old, I think would, it would a lot of it would yeah. get lost on him. Well, I'm going to, um, I'll watch, I'll give it a rewatch. That... And it's the birth of a great, um, a great mean gif of Samuel Jackson standing on the porch, <laughs> giving a stare down in his white tank top. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Cool. Um, so, uh, What's yours, Tyler? my streaming pick is actually a movie you recommended to me, Peter. Uh, it is, uh, Creep made in 2014. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Um, it was uh, directed by Patrick Bryce, written by Patrick Bryce, and stars Patrick Bryce. Uh, uh, wait, what? You mean is this is this the, um, gosh, uh, what's 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 uh, oh, what's what's ty- Joseph? Who who who's Mark who's Duplass? The guy in this? Mark Duplass. Yeah, Mark du- Well, Mark Duplass is the star, but Patrick Bryce plays the other character that is. Oh. He's not. He's not. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he wrote and directed this, the other guy? Yeah, he, the guy on the other end of the camera? Yeah, he wrote, directed, and starred in it. Mark Duplass is credited as writer as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Patrick no Bryce. Idea. Which I'm yeah, not... I thought, this is a, I thought this is the Mark Duplass show. <laughs> That's what it... <laughs> he yeah, directed you, Creep 2 well. Which is why I think that Mark du, since Mark Duplass was like the star of this show, uh, I think the reason why he's a writing credit is because this movie feels very personal. Uh, it only, I mean, really, the only people you see in it are the extras who are, uh, you know, here and gone. Yeah, they're here, here and gone. gone. Yeah, you. just uh, you not memorable. But so it's really Patrick Bryce and Mark Duplass. So obviously, I well, from what I assume is that he ha- he was like, well, maybe he can be like this. And uh, it's an interesting two hander movie. Two two actors really just kind of doing all the work themselves. Yeah, much like the lighthouse (laughs) (laughs) and this is this this between those two movies this runs the gamut of two-person films (laughs) yeah so um, uh opposed movies creep is about a guy who likes to be a videographer and (laughs) he uh face cat wants your attention tyler (laughs) Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, Lucas <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take care of that here in a second uh, So um, <laughs> okay, just... This is staying in <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in uh, So uh, Creep is uh, about a guy who is like a videographer He uh, answers an ad for uh, Mark Duplass's character uh, And then things get really weird after he walks into his house so uh you can't i i can't really give too much of the plot of the way because it's more of an experience to watch this um it's film documentary style and so Mm -hmm. there's i mean there's acting but it's it's like a a law office kind of style of uh media and Found footage, mockumentary type. Yeah, and you, you know it, it's a slow burn. I would have to say there's some pretty cheap jump scares in this, but yeah, the reason why I recommend Creep is solely for the ending. The ending of this movie is what makes the movie worth watching for sure. So what about Peach Fuzz? Peach Fuzz. Yeah, the uh, the wolf mask. Oh yeah, oh yes, yes, Peach Fuzz. <laughs> yeah, Who are you Brianna about? is terrified of Peach Fuzz, but she so likes the movie so much. It's a genuinely yeah, she does. It's a genuinely terrifying movie, uh, and um, so I I can't really. I mean, it's hard to talk about it too much without yeah, giving it, it away. But just watch it's it, uh, and especially for the ending, I I can't recommend it enough just to watch up to the ending. So yeah, creep. Uh, streaming on uh, Netflix, and, and I'm sure I didn't see if it was on Amazon, but if you, I'm Netflix, yeah, watch it, awesome, cool. So um, yeah, let's get into the meat of this episode. Uh, so uh, can, I, can I say something before we get started? Yes, Tyler, what the fuck? 
<laughs> you know, I was questioning. I also my... have something to say, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, who has? What the fuck, <laughs> Tyler? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and... I, 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 I thought I didn't know what I was expecting when I was gonna watch this. You know, it's okay. Seen... I didn't either. I've, I haven't watched. You've it seen in... the movie? Yeah, I did, but not for <laughs> like fifteen years. <laughs> I've seen I've seen a lot of kids movies. I'll go watch watch movies. You know, go over to my sister's house and hang out with the kids there. Uh-huh. And we watch all kinds of kids movies, good and bad. You know, we we watched Angry Birds together, me and the kids, <laughs> and they lost interest. Not because it was a terrible movie, just because it was not good. Yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> I, at, at the risk of Brianna being mad at me, this was not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she 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 liked she liked it, but. Uh, yeah. yeah I so, uh, <laughs> I just for context, I put George of the Jungle on the wheel at the time that I did because I was going through a little Brendan Fraser boy crush. You know, I, I was just, I, you know, I was getting really hyped up because I kept reading things about him on the internet and like, you know, remembering <laughs> this is the right what movie for that. He's wearing very little. If you if you have a Brendan Fraser boy crush. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, this is a movie like, for you. Yeah, this movie was an excuse to show as much skin as possible on a cocoa butter glistening Brandon Fraser, <laughs> very vascularly <laughs> swinging through the air for all to see. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I I chose George of the Jungle because one, I was super into Brandon Fraser at the time. Uh, I just, you know, he's just one of those actors who should have who deserves more than what he's got and so i uh, it was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna put george of the jungle on there this might be a good conversation i haven't seen this movie in a long time so i actually speak talking about brendan fraser the actor i heard that the reason why he is like took a such an absence from anything uh from mm-hmm. making movies um was that I heard that he was molested? What? Oh well, I get what? Well, okay. Like 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 from a producer or something? I Harvey think so. Weinstein. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it yeah, was, uh, I. So that's interesting that you say that because what I heard was that Brendan Fraser injured himself on the set of The Mummy Three, and he like couldn't move around a lot after that role. Like. Like Frankie Muniz, he yeah. was sex. Uh, an HFPA ex president sexually assaulted him. Wow, that's so sad. This was a while ago, dude. Oh, that's I, fuck, I, I that's heard that he up. got he went through a divorce at the height of his popularity and money making, like after the Mummy One came out, mm-hmm. and and so his like uh, alimony payments were. Like, I don't know tens of thousands of dollars a month or something oh, like that. Yeah. And and then he stopped being able to work for whatever reason, probably maybe a combination of all these things. Yeah. And now now he makes almost no money and has to pay a ton to his ex wife. And like I mean, on top of that, there there is an unfortunate picture going around with Brendan Fraser and his hair plugs at mm. a red carpet <laughs> event and Is that is that a real picture though? Yeah it is. It is. Is it the one that you had as your profile picture yeah. for a long time? It's still my profile <laughs> picture on Instagram. If you follow me, tender dot Dracula. Um, yeah, uh, it's a real picture, and it's like <laughs> I think the you should have stayed inside until the plugs took. I, I think I think <laughs> it don't look it doesn't look good. I think the it's like doll hair. I will say that I think it is photoshopped to make him look like he's about to cry, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I think yeah, I think the eyes yeah. are from someone else. Another meme. Or yeah, something. the eyes are definitely not from Brendan Fraser, but the uh, rest really like of those sad cats. It's crying. Yeah, the oh, rest yeah. of him is real. <laughs> um, so, to give context to our listeners, I put this um, movie on the wheel because I believe that he deserves some retribution, some justice, what mm-hmm. have you. And also, because you hate Joseph and I. And well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. That was wrong. Uh, Joseph and me. Tyler, if I had <laughs> if I had ten friends to make a top ten list, you would be number eleven after this. Movie. I take pride in that, Joseph. I take pride in eleventh. 
11 spot. There's only one 11 spot. I will I will say this though. It was the whole time I'm kind of like it's like is it's it's like there's there's this nonstop like zoot suit Brian <laughs> sets her orchestra <laughs> like, <laughs> compo- uh, composition running throughout the whole thing to like try to keep the energy like super high yeah like yeah, keep going. yeah. It's, it's like super energetic regardless of what's happening on screen yeah it's like the, the you're not allowed to linger on one shot for more than like one and a half seconds yeah so it has to be frenetic and go, and go 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 yeah um I it's mean, always so on it's always on Always on, yeah. Um, so far, and I, I was gonna say, I, I, I was, I was kind of mouth agape for a, much of the first <laughs> half, but there was, there was a good, uh, there was a good couple of uh, like meta jokes, yeah, where, yeah, the the, the guides through Africa, um, you know, the the jerk antagonist falls and face first in some, you know, elephant poo, and they say. Bad guy fall in poop. Classic. <laughs> what, what, what is it, Joseph? He says. Uh, Classic element of physical comedy. Yeah, yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, now as uh, watch as we throw our heads back with laughter and they laugh heartily. Um, <laughs> that, that, was pre- that was pretty funny. I mean, self aware. For our listeners, uh, George of the Jungle is really hard to describe what the plot is because it. It's not really a plot to this movie. It's like things it's, happen, but there's, there's a plot, yeah. but it doesn't make any sense. I mean, things happen. He's, <laughs> it's like, so, a, so, it's like a dumb Tarzan. Yeah, and they even reference Tarzan in it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Um, w- little bit of crossover. The guy that directed Black Snake Moan was a writer for Tarzan: King of the Jungle in 2016. <laughs> oh, wow. the remake of the Tarzan movie. I forgot yeah. they even remade um, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone did. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the uh, the um, uh, what was I going to say? So the the rough plot is this is also a 1997 Disney movie, mm-hmm. uh, which is apparent when t- I don't know two minutes into the movie you hear sounds of Abu from Aladdin, and from one of the monkeys. Oh and yeah, you say, and, like pulled direct from Aladdin. Oh, one, one of my child childhood classics. Yeah, you're you're like that sounds like Abu, and then the next scene when you actually see the monkey. He says at one point he says Abu <laughs> from the monkey well, the monkey sound and you're like this motherfuckers yeah <laughs> and like oh yeah I forgot it is Disney and then at the very end they they do a a total rip off of the, the Lion King you know uh, oh, unveiling the very, of Simba yeah, skipping the all the way to end the end of, of the movie <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean at the end of the day too it, it is a kids movie it's it's it's, it's rated a, PG it's a live action I, cartoon. That's funny that you say it's a kids movie because yeah. I don't think this is a kids movie. I think well, it's it's not it's really not shot like one, but it's it's directed as one and written as one. I think the only way that it can be considered a kids movie is the soundtrack. I think that's really, really? what keeps the mood. Of... How about the how about the uh, more more trip falls takes per minute than like a <laughs> Any Three other Stooges episode. Made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like every character's trips, whether it matters or not, they're just like walking through the scene. Whoop, fell off, tripped over a, a, a root in the jungle and they just get up and keep walking. They don't even address it. They just trip and fall and it's like, <laughs> of, do you see that? Instead of, ask, <laughs> fell again. instead of asking if they're okay, they're just like, ah, oh, ah, ah. No, they just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the, right, right off the bat, into the ballpark, uh, up to bat. Uh, they show a map of Africa as uh-huh. uh, body parts, and I noticed that the they're in West Africa, and West Africa is the liver. Now, I think they put it as the liver because I'm pretty sure you have to be under the influence of some sort of alcohol <laughs> to watch this movie as a parent <laughs> or as <laughs> well, your liver's working overtime while you're yeah, watching this exactly. movie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's... That's funny. As with any kid's movie, there's always adult humor sprinkled throughout. Yeah, for the parents. will go over the kid's head, especially the meta stuff. Mm-hmm. The, the, so the, the rough plot is that George, George comes to this jungle lifestyle when his plane crashes as a baby <laughs> and everyone gets out and everyone's accounted for and fine because it's a kid's movie and they make sure to, to point out that no one dies. Um, but the, the baby somehow starts 
swinging in the vines. Yeah, it's and ended up with the, the monkeys. It's stuck in the tree. In the, yeah, stuck in the tree, and just oh, it, now he's in part of the jungle now, and everything is fine. Yeah. Um, in a very bizarre cartoon, yeah, animated in a Greece style <laughs> intro yeah. to the movie. <laughs> Which actually, that was something I really enjoyed about this movie is that they were still doing like actual hand drawn animation at this point. Yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 in ninety seven and it looks dated even by nineteen ninety seven <laughs> standards. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I. But but it's still I, it was it was hand drawn and it was they were aiming for something and I think they got it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, the intro is definitely questionable. <laughs> like, there's no doubt in that. But I think the, I I think it's just the action of. Aiming Disney with a double paying bell for shotgun. like an actual hand-drawn animation for an intro for this movie was, you know, that was that, that was a that was a solid. So me, me and Tyler watched this together at my house, and um, we were joking. We're like this intro, George, George, George of the Jungle, do, no, 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 and we were listening to it, and we're like, wouldn't that be funny if we looked it up who performed this, and it was like someone really notable, like Paul McCartney or something. <laughs> And, and it turns out it's presidents of the United States of America <laughs> oh, yeah. perform that song, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is great. It's so great. Oh, I thought um, it was the new pornographers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Halsey. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, yeah. And w- within six minutes of the movie running, there's chafing balls jokes. A plenty. Yes. Yeah. There's many drinking jokes. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church's character, Sandman. Uh, refer- he what? This is a Sandman origin origin story. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, he played yes. the Sandman in I the Spider-Man forgot. series. <laughs> Holy shit! I forgot he played that weird character. You know <laughs> when? Uh, yeah, when me and Pete first when we were watching this, I was just like, "Is that Shooter McGavin?" Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shooter McGavin. Yeah. Wow. They look no, nothing it's alike. Paul, they, it's Paul Giamatti's best friend from Sideways. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Well, they, I mean, they kind of do. They look like they could be brothers. Mm, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, Maybe at one the, point in each of their lives. They have that <laughs> same, like, weathered look. I don't know what it is. I, I Yeah, I could see it maybe in the lower face. Yeah. Not in the Bri- eyes. Bri- Not in the eyes, but yeah. Bree would confuse them. She can't tell white people apart. Well, they all look the same, so. <laughs> um, the uh, the CGI animal faces Oof. really shows how far we've come in in CGI animals. But not like the the CGI right. wasn't even like. I was like, oh, this is just ninety CGI. What got me was when he first when the first uh, lion uh, confrontation. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking but about. I know, he, but the line goes, "Oh boy!" <laughs> oh yeah, that was rough. That was like a face warping. Uh, yeah, like they, they do like a like a, a pen warp tool on the face almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but what I'm what I'm what I'm uh, thinking about is when when George swings in, he lands on the tree, and then he like falls down the tree, and then lands on like the stuffed puppet lion. That's oh clear. yeah, oh For yeah, a second it cuts yeah. to a stuffed lion. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> clearly a puppet or stuffed animal <laughs> it, have you have you guys seen um the will ferrell spanish language movie casa de mi padre no no you really have you heard no of it? i've never heard yes. of that before so it's it's a gary sanchez pr- production so it's like judd apatow and um will ferrell and whatnot mm-hmm. and it's 100 percent spanish language it's shot to look like an old spaghetti western type like low budget um, Western movie, but it's all in Mex- set in Mexico, and Will Ferrell speaks. He's the main character, and he speaks Spanish throughout the whole movie. And there's a lot of like um, mm-hmm. intentional bad shot scenes like that, kind of mm-hmm. like how Black Dynamite was, where there a boom mic will come into scene. Oh, and they, oh uh, yeah, act, actors like make eye, eye contact with the boom mic and like shoot it out of the screen, <laughs> and they just keep rolling. <laughs> and there's it that this scene reminded me of that because there was there's a couple scenes where he's supposed to fight a lion, and it's stock footage of a lion on a cliff and then it leaps off and then someone from off off camera throws a stuffed animal lion oh. at him. <laughs> and it's uh but that was intentionally bad yeah <laughs> yeah this was just bad i was gonna say uh it's funny that you mention the puppets because i was gonna say the gorilla costumes that they had these actors in were probably a quarter of the budget because those costumes yeah, were, were really good like they were really yeah, well they were. made they're really yeah. well made for George of the Jungle. 
Like, so, I mean, think about if, that. They like people made these amazing gorilla costumes for George of the Jungle. Or they borrowed them from Congo. <laughs> <laughs> um, did did uh, so? Tyler, you say this is not a children's movie, but explain to me the <laughs> monkey wearing glasses <laughs> speaking with a British accent. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Uh, I'm waiting. Okay, so <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> hey, th- you know it doesn't. Okay, so all right, this is all an right. episode of Explain Yourself. <laughs> all right, you, Tyler. you you guys pushed me. You guys pushed me in a corner. So I okay. So maybe George of the Jungle is a little bit of a children's movie. <laughs> I I dookie dookie. Um, that's an that's an adult themed sounding bird. But I th- so the reason why I said it wasn't a children's movie uh, like that extreme reaction was because of how incoherent it was and how there was no character development. So it's like how could a child I like I'm thinking of me as a child like when I watched movies it's like how can I like this movie if there's like nothing happening it's just like images being flashed at me. Yeah. That, that's what most cartoons are nowadays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, I mean, I don't know if you sat down and watched a whole lot of, like, modern cartoons now. SpongeBob was prime. It's probably, like, the last cartoon. great. That was, was like, the, the last great. There's some there's some really good ones out there, but they're not the ones that kids gravitate, gravitate towards. Yeah. I mean, the kids gravitate towards, like, Peppa Pig. <laughs> and, Peppa like, Pig. Be the blimp. Yeah. It's a good cartoon like, because... I like I want to go back and watch it like I want yeah Mm -hmm. I want to uh, I want to have it available somewhere that's exactly what I'm getting at it's like no one is gonna the only reason why I remember George of the Jungle is because I was like on a hype about Brendan Fraser like a month ago (laughs) but had I not been hyped on Brendan Fraser like this is such a forgettable movie like it's so (laughs) it's so I watched it last night I can't remember it I just kidding. I did. I did stop paying attention like forty five minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's when we're like, this is this is fifty. We're fifty minutes into this movie. They just hit their their stride into the second act. (laughs) Which uh, I thought was crazy was that the director Stephen Sommers saw this and wanted Brendan Fraser to play Rick O'Connell in the Mummy. (laughs) This was the movie that made him want (laughs) to cast Brendan Fraser as the the lead Indiana Jones type. Was George uh, of the Jungle the movie previous to The Mummy? I don't know. Um, let's uh, let's see. I'm, I'm like on IMDb right now. 2000. Let me look at the. Let me look at the Brendan's IMDb. <laughs> the so Mummy is 97. Yeah, 99. Oh, he's got the Mummy was 99. Yeah, it's 99. He's got two years. Yeah, he did two years worth, and that was probably oh, and right before The Mummy, uh, Tyler was Blast from the Past. That one I was mentioning. Oh yeah, yeah. While we were watching this, because if you guys haven't seen. Blast from the past. That's a that's a pretty cute, uh, like wholesome comedy where Blast Brendan Fraser past. is is in a nuclear fallout shelter with his father, played by Christopher Walken, <laughs> and is stuck huh. in there for f- fifty years and below the streets of L.A. Uh-huh. Um, and they he comes to the surface. Is the only one who's like young and healthy enough to come to the surface, and he's w- equipped with all the niceties and. Um, uh, of like 1950s life because he's been doing nothing but like studying his Latin <laughs> and like manners down there in the basement with his uh, mm-hmm. dad and mom, <clears throat> and um, and he goes up up to the he what he thinks is uh, w- nuclear wasteland above and it's just shitty downtown L.A. <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to like uh, it's, uh, I don't know what he's trying to do I think he's trying to get money so he can get more supplies and come back home. But he runs just like how we all are doing. Kind of just a... what we all are doing. We're yeah. just trying to get money in this wasteland. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's cute. It's a cute movie, and it was uh, it was uh, I think one that a lot of people missed. And that was that was right before the Mummy. It was yeah, George of the Jungle, a couple TV stuff, Flash from the Past, then the Mummy. Yeah. Next week's episode, our top five favorite Brendan Fraser. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll I'll cover Bedazzled if you want to grab Monkey Bone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I call monkey bone. Um, so Leslie Mann is the uh, co-star in this movie. Who uh, I'm sh- I'm pretty sure her character was like drunk or drugged the whole time, 
because there's oh, yeah. no way just due to the plot there is no way that by all circumstances this character should be uh going off with some feral fucking human bitten by him who is patient zero of AIDS because he'd been <laughs> slapping gorilla cheeks all his life. This is a documentary about the yeah, the origin story of the AIDS virus. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know, like like it didn't seem weird to you guys, like that her character was just like so willing Very to quick. like like King Kong. Yeah, so quick and so willing to be with George. Like it Can didn't it? make any sense. I have an explanation for that. Okay. So close your eyes and imagine this movie and imagine Brendan swinging through the air, glistening in the sun with his ripped abs and deltoids, looking like a surfer from Ventura Beach or Ventura or uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, Venice Beach. Venice Beach, yeah, Venice Beach. <laughs> and then and then replace him with Danny DeVito swinging through the air <laughs> in the same fashion. Her reaction would be very different when she woke up. So, <laughs> uh, a chiseled a chiseled skater physique goes a long way in 1997. Yeah, and then her character name was weird too. Her name was Ursula. Ursula, like, yeah, that was weird. But I, I guess that, you know now I'm thinking about it. It makes sense though because she comes from like a very like Burgoyne's like upper class family. So Ursula's definitely Bur- bourgeoisie. Yeah, bougie. <laughs> we don't know how to speak English on middle class. Middle class. <laughs> Not All three of us. Wait, one, yeah. <laughs> We're only speaking I, I, a version of it. Every time, yeah, I, I love, I love it. I love that. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly do think though that Ursula was this from the source material because George the Jungle was an old cartoon from I want to say the seventies or sixties. Mm-hmm. Was it a um, cartoon? It kind of... I thought it. Oh, I'm thinking of Tarzan being the live action fifties movie. Tarzan yeah. was the '50s movie. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure if George of the Jungle was actually. Well, I mean, I believe you. Obviously, I'm not saying that. I just. I. I didn't think it was a cartoon in the '70s, though. So. Yeah, I think it was. Um, gosh, I want. I want to say it was a cartoon from the, that era around the time of the. Um, gosh, it was. Uh, um, it's like. Six underdog and that kind of thing you know Hanna Barbera the yeah. original oh yeah one, yeah around that yeah. area mm-hmm. it's so I just looked it up on Wikipedia 1967 animated TV series uh-huh. and um, mm-hmm. I would I want to say because that the theme song came from somewhere you know yeah sure. yeah that was not written one? that was not written by the the production team of this film <laughs> We it wasn't be. written by presidents of the United States of America either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Ursula Ursula was his co- his counterpart's name yeah. in the original series, just like yeah. Jane to Tarzan, Ursula to George. It's very um yeah very old style um, name. So it's kind of weird that they didn't like do like a more time period name because it was set in modern times, but. Yeah, I don't know. That's just, that's very nitpicky. So rule number one: when you rehash something, you got to use all the same character names. Uh, yeah. For for whatever reason. What I thought was weird uh, was that George of the Jungle raising the jungle, obviously, and uh, you know, no access to radio, television, any sorts of any sort of media other than the yeah. b- mm-hmm. books that the smart talking gorilla has <laughs> has access to. Um, how does he know what a pile driver is? <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm like. I'm like, who taught who to be human? Because those goddamn <laughs> apes have a British accent. Like, who taught damn who? Dirty apes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird that he he has a British accent and George has a West Coast accent. What is it ever explained how the gorilla can talk? No. Nope. Nope. Just he can. That's, that's he... for the kids. That's nope. the fun. That's the fun part. Tyler, I need an explanation. <laughs> so, I think this is what I think. I think the so this is in a very specific section of Africa. We don't really know why they're on a safari. Like they, it's not totally explained like why they're on the safari. So, my thinking They talk is, about they talk about trying to find a, the white ape, I think. The white ape. The white ape, but the white it's, ape. I, 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 he's not, the white ape. Yeah, he's the white ape. He's the white I, uh, okay, okay, so I didn't catch that. 
um, because I'm uh, dumb as rocks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is what I think. I think that they got some secret information from the U.S. government because they are a part of the top 1%, 0.1% of the uh, economy. And so when you are a part of that society, you really want to like have a thrill. So what's more thrilling than going on a classified secret mission? So they go, so a drugged up, drunk Leslie Mann and Thomas Hayden Church go on this wild ride because that's what they're promised. They're like, oh yeah, we heard that there's a section of Africa where there's talking apes due to a <laughs> chemical spill that happened. Whatever. <laughs> I love it. It's so great. why the apes talk, you may ask, well, just one is because talks. it was a multi-billion dollar oil company who spilled some chemicals <laughs> in Africa and you know of the, course. the earth and the chemicals mixed and those apes drank it up in bread and now we have British talking apes which brings in George of the Jungle okay now I want to see the sequel um, <laughs> Dawn of the Planet of the Apes <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, there are elements of this movie that were uh, they ripped off uh, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Um, I th- Ooh, I w- didn't even think about that, but that that does that does sound like that, like that's what, what specifically like, like the the two poachers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. And there was something else. Um, I think it was just kind of the style of comedy, like some of it. It, it was like this. Just reminds me of of um, of Ace Ventura. And I'm like, I'm all gassed up to watch Ace Ventura now. And um, yeah, it's, I, there, I there was definitely there was definitely similar vibes in this movie that reminded me. Mm-hmm. There was definitely something else though, other than the two poachers that were like, they wanted to uh, uh, capture the talking ape so that they could mm-hmm. you know not be poachers anymore. It's not usually a good sign when you're thinking about another movie while you're constantly while you're watching a movie. And yeah, that, the no. same thing happened to me when I was watching this, except for I was thinking about <clears throat> Encino Man oh. with yeah with Sean <laughs> Astin and Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Sean Astin's in that. Yeah, yeah he's the main character. Yeah, I had no idea. And uh, and and uh, Polly Shore. So hey. after this movie was finished finished up, we downloaded <laughs> we downloaded Encino Man and watched it, and it was well, what do you say, Tyler? Twice as good, three times as good. Yeah, Encino Man is the superior film. And it's to George of the and Encino Man's not a great movie either. <laughs> yeah, not really. But after was, watching George of the Jungle, it was just like, oh, Encino Man is awesome. Encino Man is Kino. It's the top <laughs> choice to <the> film. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> I, I, we didn't really even talk about his his uh, trip to New York. I don't really feel like we even need to get into all it's that. It's not even New York. It's San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, San Francisco. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, that's kind of a bad sign, too, because, like, it's, immediately I thought it was New York until they specifically said San Francisco because they had literally no, uh, like, signs of it being San Francisco. Just, yeah. He, they say they say San Francisco very quickly, but, I mean, the, the pacing of the movie is so fast that if you're not actually, like, engaged in the movie you're going to miss a lot there was a so when that happened when he goes to san francisco it reminded me of another movie called jungle to jungle with tim allen oh Oh, yeah made in the same year 1997 i think that movie was superior movie i remember jungle to jungle and that one actually like had like an emotionally driven plot yeah it had a coherent plot i think Uh, yeah (laughs) um so uh, I'm thinking that actually that this is where Bigfoots are raised, like where those talking gorillas are. I'm pretty sure that's like where Bigfoots are coming from. Where Bigfoots are coming from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that Bigfoots come from the place where George of the Jungle was because he was slapping gorilla cheeks. <laughs> and... <laughs> Do... Is it you just call a Bigfoot a Bigfoot? Uh, Sasquatch. 
I, Sasquatch, that's it. I, I think, think it, yeah, Sasquatch, and then uh, the winterized version is a Yeti. The Yeti is a different species. <laughs> is it? I think so. I'm not a Bigfoot expert. Like I'm just, I'm just on the fly with. I think this. Yeti, Yetis are more. Uh, I think they're more different like ad, agile uh, creatures because they live in the mountains. Oh. Anyway, um, this is <laughs> we are not a movie Let's, podcast anymore. We are uh, reviewing cryptids now. You're doing myth, legends and myths about uh, Sasquatch, <laughs> Loch Ness, and uh, megalodons. Um, <laughs> megalodons. <laughs> um, there was there was some funny, like actually funny moments in this movie. A lot of it was the meta stuff, like yeah. when, like when the yeah, narrator would interact with the characters or. Um, or George would look straight at the camera. And or break the yeah, they, wall. they break the fourth wall. There was one moment where, and this this happens in other movies, where there's a narrator where where it says something that the character is gonna do, and then the character says exactly what the narrator just said, mm-hmm. and the narrator said like, uh, he he when he gets shot in the head by uh, Sandman. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> He's going to As transport him to San Francisco. Enough head injuries. Yeah, he's going to transfer him to, or she's going to transfer him to San Francisco to get the, to get the the, the finest medical treatment available. And then she says, <laughs> "I'm going to get the finest medical treatment available." <laughs> and I just thought, I th- I just think that is like, like kind of it's 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 kind of a cheap laugh, but I think it's pretty funny, and, and especially when they do that in other movies. Where they just a lot, a lot of it's in Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, where the narrator just says it, and then they just repeat exactly what the narrator just said. So I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like this is negative Nancy podcast, but you know, it's 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 definitely on a movie geared for me. If I had two kids sitting at my side that were giggling and laughing and all the goofy stuff that were happening, I probably would enjoy this a whole lot m- more. Um, absolutely, absolutely. As, as it is in um, 2019 here in Elk Grove, uh, that <laughs> did not happen. I was watching it on a Friday night with Joseph or with Tyler and Brianna, and wishing I was watching something else. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's no, no, no disrespect. Uh, uh, Tyler lead, led to some, you know, pretty fun conversation with y'all, and now I can, oh, yeah, now, I, now I can reference it. It's now I can talk about how uh, George of the Jungle, and uh, with confidence when people ask about it, it happens <laughs> all the time. Now I have. Have you even response. really seen George of the Jungle, dude? Like, have you <laughs> seen it, dude? <laughs> yeah, we actually we we have a podcast dedicated to it. <laughs> you should listen to us sometime. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it, it was. I say it's a bad movie. If you're looking for a fun movie for kids, or let's just say you wanted to put some cartoons on for kids and instead wanted to put just a movie, this would basically be a good substitute for cartoons because there's a lot of slapstick, a lot of goofy, like high energy, frenetic stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But maybe a kid will look at it and, you know, laugh themselves silly. Um, yeah, it this. really is. It really is not that good of a movie at all. Um, it's, it's, it's not. It really isn't. It's a money grab really what it is well that's uh, most most rehashes of like old um 1960s Cartoons. 70s 80s uh, intellectual properties or are, yeah i mean do they need to make did they need to make journey to the center of the earth no 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 no, no. no. It's, no it's not it's not not going to be good you know unless you hire like a, a decent writing staff and a, a like proven team that can do a good movie and just mm-hmm. say okay you have a good script Use these characters that people have recognized, but put your own, you know, uh, story and plot into it, and we'll just, you know, slap yeah. this name on it so there's some recognizability in the marketing, and people who are um, 55 or older are gonna look at it and go, I remember that from my childhood, and they're gonna be more likely to <laughs> yeah. see it instead of, you know, I remember the Jetsons. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so you know, it's I, there's, it's always a bad sign when it's a rehash from somewhere else. Um, only recently, yeah. in the last maybe f- five to ten years, are you starting to get some that are done of a higher quality? Like Twenty One Jump Street was pretty good for a rehash, but it really didn't have. You much can't forget e- the Ghostbusters remake with an all female cast. That's that's progressive, very progressive. Let's not forget Rocky and Bullwinkle starring Robert. <laughs> <Dinger>. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> which, oh boy. which by the way, um, has the same. Uh, director of photography as this movie. 
Are you kidding me? Does not surprise me. I'm not me kidding you. But also, I will run down the list. I wrote down a list of movies that this DP also shot. Oh my god! Um, oh, the kidding. best movie on it on his on his list being Jumanji. Oh um, okay, yeah, that was. So a good, he did, that, did have Jumanji. Good shots that movie. Jumanji, Baby's Day Out, <laughs> My Favorite Martian, <laughs> Snow Dogs, and. Anchorman. Oh, okay. That was actually yeah, I good. did enjoy Anchorman. <clears throat> I did. Uh, you guys, you guys have a rating for this? Well, before we get into ratings, <laughs> yeah, there is I, one. I have more to say. <laughs> there is one thing I do have to say. Um, you hear this? <laughs> I have a lot to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> notes on notes on notes. We got a lot to say about George of the notebook. Jungle, but um, uh, yeah. One thing I do have to say regarding the actual movie and the characters was the side character the skinhead looking dude the guy who plays the skinhead in american history x not edward norton but the his like friend or whatever um he was wearing a leather jacket the entire time he was in africa and he was in the jungles of africa i um he probably smelled like curdled foreskin (laughs) <laughs> rotted dick <laughs> rotted dick and i thought th- i thought that was i thought they should have played on that a little bit more that because he was wearing like a leather jacket in like a tropical setting like i th- that there was attacked or something yeah the, well yeah. not the, the attack well i mean like by the writers he would be attacked you know? <laughs> <laughs> like there is a lot of jokes to be made with wearing a leather jacket in the tropical uh, area so there was a there was one tiny small thing that I thought was completely ridiculous. Like probably one of the most ridiculous things that I heard in this movie was when so he's on the bridge right and he saves that dude, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. the skydiver. That was not that's not the ridiculous part. The ridiculous part was the newswoman. Her name was Terrellin. Like Carolyn with a T. Or Marilyn with a T. Marilyn with a T. <laughs> Terrellin. Terrellin. She, that that they're name prophesying I never the stupidest <laughs> names of 2019. Never heard that name in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't say I've never heard of someone named Terrellin before. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, but what I have to say about this movie is kind of the same thing I said about the lighthouse. Was uh, just because you're a fan of the witch does not mean <laughs> you're gonna like this movie. <laughs> That's a great. That's a great point. That's true. That's true. It's in technically true. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, ratings. I for me, I would give this movie a flat out one out of five. Uh, it was. It wow. was. Wow. Yeah. It was a terrible movie. I regret putting it on the wheel. I will not. Ne- I will not let my emotion for Brendan Fraser persuade my choices ever again. And I am truly <laughs> sorry to subject you guys and our listeners who want context for this podcast to watch George of the Jungle. So you won't be putting, you won't be putting Bedazzled on the wheel in place of George of the Jungle. Uh, yeah, no, I am not. <laughs> I, I enjoy Bedazzled. At least I yeah. did when I was a kid. I thought I thought it was funny. I like the boobs. <laughs> I don't remember that. Elizabeth Hurley. I don't remember that movie though. I I saw it when I was too young, probably. Another another sh- movie based on an old show. Really? Uh, was it? Yeah, I think so. It was a bedazzled little that's, show. That's Bewitched. Oh, Bewitched. Yeah, which they did make into a movie with Nicole Kidman. Oh yeah, and Nicole Farrell. Kidman and Will. Never Farrell. mind. I'm wrong. <laughs> You're pretty close. Uh, what about? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joseph. Yeah. Well, I was kind of generous when the movie ended and i gave it a two and a half wow a it was like it's pretty much you know out of five so that's like a 50 percent but since talking it's gone down and um (laughs) yeah i'm remembering how much of a shitty time i had (laughs) it's a one and a half i'll give it a one and a half and i only give it a point the extra point five because of the effort they tried to do with uh, the meta jokes in there. Uh, okay. I can yeah. appreciate the effort to throw in some some of that kind of humor <laughs> in this kind of movie. 
for uh for the adults. For sure. Um so yeah. A well, one and a half out of five. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a two out of five. Wow. And and, and here's That's why. A bold <laughs> move. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you why and I stand behind it. Um I really feel like they were doing their best to make a cartoon into a live action movie. And if I put myself into the headspace of a super wholesome um, adult that doesn't really care about, you know, fantastic plot and Mm -hmm. character development and just wants to see something funny with some goofy stuff that happens, there's lots of winks at the audience. There's lots of uh, little goofy jokes and plays on words and they do get a, they do a good job of keeping the pace high. It's 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 childish, and a lot of the jokes fall flat. So you know it's not great for an, an adult no like that. No pun intended. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> no. <fall flat. laughs> but yeah, it's not great for an adult like that. But it would be great for I think a lot of kids. So you know it's not quality content a la Pixar, um, but it mm. it's would keep your kids entertained. So I mean, you could do a lot worse. You could do a hell of a lot better. Yeah. So two out of five. Wow, I'm surprised. I yeah, two I was out of five. I was. I talk. A, I talk. A, I talk a big game about how shitty this movie is, but at the end of the day, it's two out of five. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah, after watching that movie, I was I was actually a little bit disappointed. I thought it. I thought <laughs> Brendan <laughs> Fraser had much actually. more to offer, but um. You know, well, he had the abs and the pecs. Yeah, so yeah. Brendan Fraser, he has an amazing body in this movie. So if you're he into yeah. uh, male physiques, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. peak male physique. Yeah, peak male physiques. <laughs> one one thing I didn't appreciate about this movie is that it moved. It moved, Jerry. It moved. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joseph Joseph gets that. What'd you say? It moved. I said it moved. Jay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so uh, let's uh, get to the Wheel of Destiny. <laughs> all right, wheel time. Um, I'll do a wheel recap. Wheel time, of what we got. wheel time. Tyler, what you have left now is Escape from New York, which is the wild card, and Mr. America. Yes. Um, do you want to change either one of those right now? Uh, no, uh, we're going to have those choices on good. still. Okay, like, those are actually movies that I enjoy. So, uh, <laughs> All right, and then uh, Joseph's got The Machinist and From Beyond, and his wild card is Bad Lieutenant Protocol New Orleans. Um, and just for – we didn't re- never really touched on the whole wild card thing. Once one of those lands and gets watched, then I'll have one on there. So I'll have three – instead of two on the wheel because there's eight spaces yeah and three yeah. of us and then for my two choices i have uh they look like people and uh stoker so joseph tyler what do you want to replace this with so i'm replacing george of the jungle with the blair witch project um this the is the remake no no the original 1999 blair witch project oh, they... The new one's just called Blair Witch. Yeah, the new one's just called Blair Witch. Um, so, replacing the it with... The Bear Wench Project. <laughs> that porn parody, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> as, as good character-driven plots. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Blair Witch... Right. It's on the wheel. Project. Sweet. So, let's, uh, let's bin her up. What's uh, any particular reason why you choose Blair Witch Project? Um, yeah, uh, because it's one of my favorite movies, top twenty favorite movies. So um, it's a very divisive movie. It is. I've never seen it. Wow. Really? I've seen bits of it. Wow. Wow. Huh? Yeah. It's, um, well, it. So I guess for our listeners, if you guys like the videotape scenes in Annihilation, you will love the feel for this movie, or maybe not. I don't if you know. like. If you like found footage movies. This is a, a an iconic found footage movie. I, I do like Troll Hunter. Troll Hunter is oh, good. Yeah. Troll Hunter, I love Troll, Troll Hunter. Hunter is my great. favorite found footage movie. Troll. 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 <laughs> okay, ready? Yes, Time ready. Spin. And spin the wheel of destiny. There it goes. Oh, just by a smidge, Stoker. Yeah, I've never seen this movie. 
So Stoker is a 2013 uh, drama. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the, in the show. It's directed by Chan Wook Park, starring mm-hmm. Mia Wasikowska, Nicole Kidman, and uh, Matthew Good. And it is very eerie, and it's a slow burn, and the cinematography and the set uh, blocking is so beautifully done that every every shot has one or two um, like every scene has one or two shots in it that could be paused and added as a still that could be like a a, um, a desktop um, photo for your computer because yeah. it's so beautifully done nice um, <clears throat> yeah and it's Chenwick Park if you don't know him he's the guy that did Old Boy which is killer Korean um, so this is crime a foreign, drama. foreign film it no. is directed by a foreign person, but it's an American movie. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, like, yeah, I loved Old Boy. It's just like uh, Snowpiercer. Yes, yes. Um, directed by Bong Joon. Oh. So Stoker, Stoker's not streaming anywhere, so if you're at, at, um, at home, Fuck. you're listening along with us, and you want to watch the movie before we uh, pick it apart next week, um, you can get it for 3 bucks on PlayStation Store, on YouTube, which is probably – one of my favorite things that's happened to um, home movie watching in the last few years is you don't even YouTube. have to leave your house for Redbox, but you can go to YouTube. You know, you search on YouTube and it'll say full complete movie preview. Nice. And then if you want to rent it or watch it, it's, you know, two or three bucks. Oh, it's yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. And so I always I always thought that the sec the time or the time in history once movies were that easy to rent, where you could literally just be scrolling along on your PlayStation and click. Um, oh, here's this movie, and just click. Oh, my card's already linked, and three dollars out of my account, and I'm watching the movie right now. That's how, that's how people stop pirating movies. Dude, we're li- we're living in the future. We are. I miss <laughs> Blockbuster. Yeah, I do too. And if you're listening along at home and you want to send us an email, uh, drop us a line at mcfcpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, we are getting. Right now, an average of zero emails per week. <laughs> so, so if you email us, there's a really high probability, unless it's just racial slurs <laughs> typed out uh, on repeat, that we will probably read it on air. And um, follow us on Facebook, <laughs> facebook.com slash podcast. And um, if you're listening to this, uh, well, I guess we don't need that part. If you're listening to us, you already know where to find us. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we're on uh, we're on Stitcher now and iHeartRadio, but if you're listening to this, you already know where to find us. <laughs> hey, may, we may record video for our episodes in the future. You never know. That's true. We'll go we'll go Joe Rogan style. Yeah, we will go Joe Rogan on everyone's asses. We have to. I'll take peyote before we record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, cool. Uh, we'll check out Stoker next week. Uh, thanks for all joining. Thanks, everybody. See you later.